Hey guys, welcome to YOLO with Tolo. Good to see you guys. Um, today's episode 26. Um, well, today we're talking about speaking up in the wake of everything that's happening with Kavanaugh and with Cosby being sentenced. Let me um, get Lonell on the phone. Um, aside from not only just sexual harassment stuff that's been going on in the news, we want to talk also about just you speaking up in general and honoring whatever is your truth is, get them on, um, in your career, things that you've wanted to do, speaking to the universe. So Lonel is chiming in now. Cheers, what's up? What's going on? Hi, how are you? Where are you? Where, that's a good question. Where, where's the hotel for? I think, oh. What city? Charleston, South Carolina. I can't even, I don't know where I am. Charleston. I know. <laughs> Well, we just got back from some big trips. How was Dubai celebrating your big five? Oh, cheers. Oh, my goodness. Let me just tell you, I highly recommend living your best life to everyone. It was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Every bit of it was just wonderful. Even though I've been several times before, uh, doing it on my own, because every the times I've gone before have really been like for work. But just having the time to just spend there, I realized how poor America is how far behind the rest of the world America is. But I absolutely mm -hmm. loved it. Loved it. What were your main uh, highlights? Oh, my goodness. The new Louvre Museum that they opened in da Abu Dhabi, they built this uh, museum out on the water. It has this really webbed dome over, and it gives the illusion that it's, um, like it's floating above it. And that was a highlight. I'm a big roller coaster freak, so watch, riding the new coasters that I hadn't ridden at a Ferrari World was a high. There were so many highlights. The dinners, the sushi. There's this yes. place I go to at the hotel, and I there's know. this girl. Uh, they call her Wasabi Girl. Her, her, her <laughs> only job is to come to your plate and put wasabi on your sushi. What? So when you need it, they go, Wasabi Girl. <laughs> and then she comes running around with this big green wig. It's so awesome. So she's always a highlight. Yeah, I've been following you on social media. It looked like you had a good time. Um, I just got back from Hawaii, my cousin's wedding, and it was magical. It was in Maui. Had such a great time. You know, my family, we don't, like, get along, uh, not get along, but we don't get together very often in terms of, like, the whole family from around the world. So it was just nice seeing everybody kind of get together in paradise. Um, and it's just, you know, my baby cousin, time passes by so quick. And, you know, it just made me realize that, like, you know, weddings and funerals bring people together, right? And so we need to make more time hanging out with people that we do love. But I also ate my way through Maui. I don't know if y'all have been. Have you been? I've been to Maui, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You this know, is my fourth time. From Maui. I know, well, I know Oprah does have a magical ranch there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, was, it was amazing. And you know, the funny thing is, um, I remember, you know, the late Wayne Dyer, spiritual, um, a writer and uh, teacher uh, said that, you know, I read somewhere that he said you got closer to God in Maui and I totally right. feel that way too. There's something You posted just... that on one of your posts. Yeah, yeah, just totally, yeah, one of my Instagram posts. I just totally feel closer to something bigger than us there, you know? So it was a magical. Anyway, so shall we get going to talk about Tolo's Hot Topic this week? Yes, yes, oh yes, my gosh. yes, yes. Speaking up, this has been a topic of conversation I know you and I have been talking to our friends about. And just with everything happening with Bill Cosby sentencing, with Kavanaugh, with Top Chef um, host Padma Lashmi's um, recent um, article, um, poignant article um, that she wrote, um, I think it was in the New York Times. Um, but gosh, it's, you know, it made me think about you know, my life and other people's lives that I know where people like, have held on to secrets. Um, and that, you know, both good and bad, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, we, we, you know, with the whole hashtag me too mo movement of like, you know, sexual assault and all that, that gets really deep and serious, but also, you know, in terms of the professional world, so many people I know are holding on to a secret like that. They want to be, you know, something more than they are in terms of work. And they're just afraid whether it's acting or whether it's being a Michelin star chef, but they're just afraid to sort of come out about it. You know, yeah. um, but gosh, let's start off with, with all the, the craziness in the news. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to make of it because I'm also not even surprised anymore. Right. And, and but we can't that's the thing. We can't become numb to it. Mm -hmm. But 
yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just, it can be a woman. That's the one, I guess you were asking me about highlights. I went 14 days without hearing anything about your president <laughs> or any of your president. drama. I didn't hear any, that, that was the highlight. Yeah. But it, it also told me that, you know what, I can detach from all the madness yeah. and still be okay. Yeah. So, you know, not, not watching the news for two weeks and all that stuff and not being glued and plugged into what was going on here and just really being in the moment of my vacation, I was able to realize, oh, yeah, this is actually okay. Yeah. It's actually okay to, to, to detach. Yeah. So that part, yeah, definitely uh, wonderful. But just, just the stuff that's going on, it's, it's all, it, it, it appears overwhelming, but you know what, it's, it, everything is there to teach us. It's all, you know, and all this stuff has been bubbling for centuries. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, yeah, does it suck that, you know, Bill Cosby is kind of going to jail because we have this, we have this romanticized image of mm -hmm. Huxtable, not Bill Cosby. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and and even myself, I've benefited greatly from, you know, because he created a different world. He's the one that yeah. gave me my first job yeah. uh, in, in the entertainment industry. So he, he provided that platform. So I, with most things, I'm able to separate the work from the, the individual. But, you know, you can't be drugging women and then, you know, having your way like that. You know, dude, yeah. dude. <laughs> so just, with all that stuff, and then yeah. you know, and then we, but we can't have these double and triple standards. Like, okay, it's okay for Cosby to go to jail, but Kavanaugh gets to go to the Supreme Court. Girl, bye, miss me with that. Yeah. So it yeah. needs yeah. to be, you know. Yeah, totally I, we said we weren't going to get political. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. We don't need to get political. <laughs> yeah, but in terms of speaking out, though, I mean, like, I'm so proud of these women who have, you know, it's yeah. it's hard to come out and be in the public. Um, was it Anita Hill back in the day who came out mm -hmm. about her sexual harassment? And, you know, I remember seeing uh, the video of like this, you know, this like all white man on the, uh, you know, on the jury and, you know, and they were just really bullying her. And what's interesting, this whole, I want to make a point about this whole Me Too movement too. It's just not about just sexual harassment. It's about bullying of all kinds too. It's just like right. speaking up about what has happened to you. Um, and, um, what I'm very interested in, in, in is how does one, you know, um, conjure up uh, the enough courage to speak your truth, uh, you know, because I believe that a lot of us don't speak up at certain times because they we feel unsafe. Right. Right. Well, now at least people know, you know, a lot of these women know they're not alone. So finally, yeah. you know, I've been harboring this. It was kind of like for, for myself, like years ago, feeling like I was the only gay person in the world when I was trying to come out. Yeah. You know, it's like you felt like you're trapped and you were isolated and alone. But now these women understand that, you know what, no, it's not just me. It's, it's me too. Yeah. So there's there's so many more people and there's power in telling your story and yeah. knowing that you're not alone. So I think that's yeah. a huge critical component today that was missing years ago because if you said something years ago you lost your job you lost yeah. your everything yeah. so yeah. um and but now those tides are changing and i'm not even going to sit here and pretend like oh like i have some you know bit of sorrow i'm yeah. glad they're changing look there to be a big old tidal wave and yeah. wash away that foolishness so people need to be accountable we yeah absolutely it. and you know I, I i know you you and i were talking about the padma last me uh you know uh, article that she put so poignantly wrote um it you know what was interesting about that was she was she had talked about one of the incidences of another perpetrator um uh, when she was seven and she was uh, molested and she said she told right. her parents and her parents sent her to india for the year so she made a note to self that don't speak out and i think right. that that is so dangerous when you feel like you are not at a safe place. One thing I tell my niece and nephew, um, a lot of young people in my life is that, you know, if you are afraid to speak to your parents about something because you're ashamed or whatnot, find, I, you know, talk to me. I may be disappointed if you made a bad decision or something had happened, but you know, what you, the point that you made is really, I think um, uh, very important is that you don't feel alone when you speak out and you know, in stepping, you always say step in your light. When you're stepping in the light in the darkest times, or you're stepping into your darkness and which helps you find your light. Or it stepping through your light. darkness. Yeah, right? Through right. your darkness. It helps other people <laughs> come out about it, right? And I think that is so huge. Um, I, you know, we're talking here about, you know, obviously sexual harassment, but I keep telling 
everybody I can about Ellen DeGeneres' um, commencement speech. If you just YouTube Ellen DeGeneres and commencement speech and truth, she had talked about fi talking about coming out, you know, on her show and how she lost her show and how she's found her way. But, you know, it ain't all pretty, you know, it, it, and it's very hard whether you're coming out about being gay or coming out about whatever it is you're coming out about because you, you, you want to make people proud that you think, you know, that, that you, I don't think, I want to say think love you, but people, you want to make people proud or you're just always worried about what people have to say, I think, especially when you're younger. Um, but there is... Uh, and, you know, uh, on the flip side, an amazing um, weight that's lifted off of your shoulders when you speak your truth and that speak other people, truth. yeah, and other people can feel like they can speak their truth. It's, it's an amazing right. thing, you know, and um, there's this, uh, there's this woman um, that uh, Kevin is our, our, our producer today. Kevin uh, can post um, Deborah Copigan, she's a photographer that's also a friend of my journalism sister, Juju Chang on ABC News. Um, Juju Chang, I love her. Oh, Juju, I love Juju, yeah. But um, hey, Juju. Uh, but she, uh, her friend wrote um, uh, an, an article in The Atlantic about a letter to that, that, uh, that she wrote to many years later to the guy that uh, raped her, um, date raped her the night before her college graduation many years ago. And he, apologized he said he was drunk he didn't remember and he and so anyway so that led her to publishing but editing out like you know any names of descriptors uh of of the rapist and her friends and other people involved but she had said that this whole weight had been lifted and it helped her in the healing process so i think there is some sort of catharsis that happens um and healing that happens when you do tell someone about it yeah. and somebody else knows about it and also telling the perpetrator themselves, um, you know, which leads me to another topic that um, that I would like to talk about in the future is forgiveness. It leads you to this forgiveness and whatever all that means. We'll, we'll kind of talk about that in another show. But there is some sort of healing, I believe, that happens to us um, in different stages when we do speak our truth. Yeah, and women have been carrying these this burden along yeah, for a long time. time. Yeah, since the beginning yeah. of time. So yeah. it is. It is. We are definitely we're overdue for more uh, female leadership, and women yeah. are really going to just be the ones, I believe, to undo this whole yeah. mess up yeah. paradigm. And I'm here for it. Yeah, exactly. I'm definitely right. here for it. I know. So. Me too. Me so too. it's yeah. The, okay, the transition is never is never good. I mean, it's never smooth, but it does happen. And yeah, the dump absolutely. Home, dump it. Dump in the hump, segment two. Uh, I want to ask you, and I'm, I've been thinking about this too, of a time in which you spoke out and you felt like oh, relieved. Do you remember like a, like a kind of like seminal time in your life? I, yeah, there have been several times when I've spoken out and I've been relieved. Um, when I was, I know once when I was managing a, a call center down in Atlanta, and uh, there was someone, there was a manager above me, like a senior manager above me who was really just after me. And finally, when I really just, you know, spoke the truth to the CEO of the company, I was glad, but for, I, I was hesitant for so long because yeah. I didn't want to make waves and, you know, I, I really, but these people are incompetent. And finally I just had it. But after I spoke to the CEO at that particular point, um, I felt such relief. Mm. And then I ended up getting that person's job, even though that wasn't what I was seeking <laughs> to begin with. But, <laughs> but, I, but there was some power in just, in just being able to speak up for yourself and, and call a thing a thing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you don't want, you know, that's hard because you don't want to hurt people's feelings. You want people mm -hmm. to like you. Yeah. Or it may be hurtful. And especially if it's some like, secret that you're holding on to or some pain, you don't necessarily want to be vulnerable with your pain. So yeah. um, you've got to find the space. There's always power once you do it. Uh, once yeah. you step step through that fear, uh, yeah. But stepping up to the plate to do it, mm, it's not so much fun. Yeah, there's no one size fits all kind of scenario or you know like answer to this, right? Um, and I think that in your heart, you know when you just had enough, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know. And I, I'm trying to think of for me, there's so many times like I'm an outspoken person. You know, my family knows that. And so I've always been the one to, like, raise my hand in class and, like, oh, no, you didn't. You know, like, you know, type of kind of person. Um, but I do remember, um, you know, a time when, like, for example, my dad, you know, 
I didn't have a great relationship with my dad. And, you know, uh, there are times when, like, you know, he and my mom would get in arguments. And then, like, he would literally, like, one time he threw the kitchen table against the window with all this food my mom had set on the table for him. And I yelled at my dad. And my mom was, like, yelling at me for yelling at my dad. You know, oh, wow. and, and I and kind of what in terms of like what happened with Padma, where um, she told her at seven years old, she told her her parents that she was molested and they sent her away. I was like, well, I was confused and conflicted because I was like, well, is speaking out not a good thing? Am I causing more harm? Did it cause a bigger rift or like what, you know? And so it, I think with, uh, uh, the beautiful thing about experiences in life is that, you know, if, it does come back in different ways, shapes, and forms. We always talk about this when um, you don't learn your lesson. We always talk about when challenges happen that are here to teach you something, right? And when you don't learn, it teaches you in different ways, shapes, and forms. But one thing I'm actually getting a ha of getting from this conversation, I love it when that happens. Um, it's one of my favorite things, is that, you know, you are not alone. So now if I were to talk to my little, you know, prepubescent kid who yelled at my dad for, you know, um, harming my mom, I would say, talk to somebody about it, talk to somebody else about it, you know, and I think that's the beautiful thing about us talking on Wednesdays and our, our friendship, really. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, it seems like you guys really do get along. And, you know, this isn't for show, you know, the reason why we're doing this show is, you know, we're holding each other accountable. But every time we talk, we sort of get to this, like, we learn from each other, we get excited, we want to share this kind of excitement, um, you know, w with people. Um, but that's a beautiful thing when you find someone else out there. I think you're very lucky if you can find at least one person right. where you feel like you can be open with and honest with and non not judged for, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. So I have a good you. friend um, yeah. <laughs> whose name I won't say, but he, he is, just a couple of days ago, uh, asked me, he said, can I, can I tell you something just for safety purposes? And he was actually going on a, a, an internet date mm. and he was saying, you know, can I, for safety purposes, without you judging me? And <laughs> a lot of so friends it was like, that wow. And it was like, and the thing is we had this whole little dynamic where we were always doing daggers back and forth. Yeah. But of course I know this is serious. Yeah. So, you know, that he was able to like, you know, confide in me and then we were able to talk about it and I was able to get numbers, names and whatever. It's, you know, yeah. if there were any issues. Um, but again, it's like you, we have close friends like that that we may not necessarily, you know, you still may feel judged if you do certain things that are out of character that, or, yeah. or they think is out, of, is out of character. So yeah, it is important to have at least, at least one person that you can, and all, that's all you need is one. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's just like, when you just tell somebody there's some sort of psychological and I think physical, emotional and spiritual release that happens, you know, and, and I just exactly. hope that everybody has that kind of safe place to go. Um, there has to be somebody out there, you know, and, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to say that I have a lot of people in my life, but it, again, it's like, you know, you have to put the energy in to get that, you know, what you get put out comes back tenfold. So, you know, I know that you and I do that for a lot of least. people. Yeah, you and I do that for a lot of people. A lot of people do that for us, you know. Anyway, talk to us. We'd love to uh, move on to segment three here and talk talk to Tolo. Uh, we um, want to hear what you guys think about speaking out. Um, we have um, a couple great questions here, actually. Um, one of them comes from Lauren in Los Angeles. Let me read this. She says, how do you overcome your fear of failure when pursuing your true passion? That's a good one. Yeah. There's no one size fits all. I don't think mm -hmm. there's, any, there's any specific recipe for that. You just have to walk through it. You just have to walk through that mm -hmm. fear of the failure. Yeah. Because really, that's the, that's the only thing that's stopping you. I love, I don't even know if you saw Will Smith did this whole 50th birthday jump. Yeah. Where he jumped, jumped out off on a plane. Facing bungee jumped over the Grand Canyon. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I love how he talked about, you know, before it was like, you know, he had that moment of nervousness and trepidation, like, what, you know, what in the world am I doing? And then it was like, okay, well, now after he did it, he was like, as soon as he let go, physically let go of the helicopter, he was like, whoa, yeah, whoa, this is what it's like on the other side of your fear. And that's the thing. You just have to face it and push through it. So there's not a, you can't really tiptoe around the, the fear thing. You just have to march through it and understand yeah. that you're bigger than 
than the fear. Yeah, I don't think you know this about me either, but I that resonated with me a lot when I saw that because um, I actually saw it first on Jada and Pinkett's his wife's uh, Smith's um, Instagram, and I was like, oh my god! I remember jumping off of a, a little Cessna in Davis, California, because I was afraid of heights, and I was like, I'm gonna skydive. <laughs> And, you know, it wasn't even bad. It was actually exhilarating and fun. But the, the leading up to it, I think the mental anguish that we cause in our own head, and we need to get out of our own head sometimes, uh, right. was was even, that was the scariest part. I think once you jump out and you're like, oh, you know, and the... Because the, um, at that point, off, you're helpless. You know, it's like, you, yeah. you got to believe. Surrender. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. It was exhilarating. So, you know, I get that. And I think that, um, you know, to your point, Lauren, I think that... Um, whether it's, you know, in terms of, for me, professional, whether it's personal or professional, but for an example that I have is, personally, I always wanted to um, be certain things. Like, I wanted to be um, a reporter, in a, you know, uh, and I made it all the way to San Francisco Market number 5. I wanted to run scripts to LeVar Burton's Reading Rainbow. And, you know, and I ended up co-hosting a show, and I wanted to teach. I have no... Um, you know, I have no uh, master's degree, which you need to teach, but I taught at two universities. Um, and I think there has to be, in terms of career-wise, um, uh, an intention and have you either write it down. I think writing it down and speaking it to people so that the universe knows and people know and the universe and people, there's this like things that uh, kind of coalesce the and right conspire people. to help you, right? Because I have to yeah, tell your story to those who've earned the right to hear. Isn't that what Brene oh, Brown said? Oh, that's a said? good one. Oh, that's so a you good can't, one. So you can't just, yeah, you can't just be blabbing about what you, exactly. yeah, because everybody's not, everybody's not for you. Yes. So, and that's with everything, too. It's like whether you're coming right. out about being gay or, or your career, because there's naysayers out there and you're like, whatever, like. Bye, Felicia. You know, right. you'll you be in like fun. these toxic relationships. Yeah. And like, yep. well, girl, you cannot let go of your meal ticket, or he does this and he does this <laughs> and that, and but you're miserable. Yeah, they don't deserve to know. I love that. I love that. That's a great, that's a really great quote. Um, but I think that um, in you speaking your truth, like I've always been, I'm like at age 32, 33, I've done everything I wanted in my career. And I was like, what is the next thing I want to do? And then I was, I kind of kept it a secret. And I was like, I would love to be like a talk show host. But then I never saw any other Asian males out there, especially in like the do good sector. And people are always like, oh, you know, you like the Asian male Oprah, or you want to be Oprah. And I'm like, no, I just want to be me, you know, and I want to be able to inspire people to be better and do better for themselves and others and teach through, you know, this medium that just comes kind of naturally for me is just to speak on camera and and speak also one-on-one, -on -one, just the whole communications part. But I think once you speak it until the universe and you start taking baby actions and then surrendering, it that's big, surrender. You start, and drawing, it you start drawing more like experiences to yeah. yourself. It's pretty magical. I, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know, um, you know I, I don't know how to even put it into words. You just gotta do it. It's like this alchemy that happens that's pretty amazing. Um, step question number two from anonymous here is how do you know when it's time to actually speak up whether it's Whoa. about a career or some secret or pain you're holding wow well that's deep i always say just get still and and you'll know you'll have that urge when it's like okay you know when you just yeah because sometimes if you speak too soon mm -hmm. you might sabotage something you might change the trajectory and not the way that you intended and if you wait too late, it may just be too late. Yeah. So, yeah, it is It is tough. That's a tough one to, to, to realize. When do you actually speak up? I just really believe in your heart you will know. I mean, yeah. I know in, in instances where I've spoken up, it's, you know, I've been, I would be entertaining the idea or for a while. And then when I just couldn't have it to stand it anymore, and I'm like, no, listen. Yeah. I don't have that problem yeah. so much now, but, I, you know, in the early days of my uh spiritual transition it was harder uh spiritual but at some point you just you would just listen to your listen to your your inner your gut basically will tell you when yeah. it's time that's really cool like um i mean this whole sitting still part i think that even comes before anything else it's just being quiet um and that might lead you to writing about it that might lead you to talking about somebody else about it um loretta says when it's debilitating speak up yep your body knows hey loretta 
Uh, Loretta's yeah. so right. Hey, yep. that's <laughs> when so... it is debilitating, right? Yep. And you know, like earlier I said, you know when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, you just right. like, I'm done with Right, it. don't let I'm that done. fester. Yeah, right. exactly. And the sooner that, that you learn that it. lesson, yep. uh, the better you will tr you'll be able to transform your entire life. Because once you start speaking up, you start stepping into that braveness, it, it, that bravery and into your power. And then that will, that will, will spill over into other areas of your life. It, yeah. it always does. Sometimes we just wait until it's too late. And you just, it's just, over. It, when I say too late, it's like it's never too late. But uh, when you wait too you, long, you don't have to waste. Yeah, you can, you can, yeah. you can waste a little less yeah. time if you. And a lot of times, I mean, if you're getting anything from this conversation, it's just like you know, just feel it, and speak it when you feel it, and you just know when it is. When you're just like, mm -hmm. I'm done, you know. Oh, uh, uh. You know, I call yeah, it. Yeah, you uh, know that point. I mean, <laughs> yeah. sometimes I, I have to be. You know, I'm the main one. I can't just say the first thing that comes to my mind, but. Uh, <laughs> Because sometimes it may not be right, you know. Yeah. It, it, it may be it may be a little heat on it because it might be coming from a place of emotion. Yeah. But you you know when something's festering and you got to speak up, yeah. especially if it's if it's if it's a weight that you're carrying, you have to release it. And you know, because if you can't sleep if you're thinking about it or mm -hmm. you're tiptoeing and walking on eggshells yeah. around certain people, no child, speak yeah. it up and move on. <laughs> Basically, Kevin, our producer, totally was channeling what was in my head. I was gonna say. How he says having confident confidants slash mentors who can bestow wisdom. I was just gonna say, know your tribe. Know your tribe. We call it our Tolo <laughs> tribe, but know your tribe, because you can if if you are you want to say something and you don't feel safe about it uh, to uh, to that person or to kind of like an authority, then find people who you trust. Right. Which and don't key. be afraid to let go of those people that you don't. Yeah, because you don't exactly. need them in your life. Yes, basically. You're gonna be just fine without them. Yeah, but once you do, you're just gonna like with everything in my life that I festered over, um, and kind of spoke out about or took action on. It was just such a huge relief. It's like you're carrying literally like it's like in CrossFit we do these farmer carries where you carry these really heavy weights all the way to the end. It's like dropping those weights. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, speaking about dropping. Dropping weights, we need to drop our phone. So let's move on to digital detox segment four here. <laughs> digital detox. <laughs> have I, have, you been doing? I have a solution for digital detox. Travel. Vacation. <laughs> not everybody can vacation though. Oh, everyone can. You need to make time. Now, now you you may not be able to go all across the world. Super far, yeah. You can True. vacation. Go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can vacation. vacation you know, I can take a vacation out. today. You're right. Yeah, no. Yeah. You have to expand your basically taking a vacation is is actually just detaching whether yeah. it be somewhere locally for an afternoon or a yeah. few hours something well what's helped me when i went to hawaii was that i was trying to be in the moment so i love taking pictures it doesn't i don't feel like it takes me out of the moment i just love to snap them so i can you know remember later but also when i take photos it's almost like artwork for me it's like an artistic expression but i take it and you and i never post exactly where i'm at because i don't want people to show up um, Kevin says not everybody detoxes during vacation either. Some use it as a license to be on devices or more. Then that's not vacation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I was talking to a colleague who was going to Mexico with his wife for a four-day weekend. And he was talking about he wasn't going to take his laptop, but he's taking his iPad and his phone. Yeah. yeah. Either you're going to detach yeah. or you're not. I should put one of my family members on blast, but I'm not going to. But this person when we were on the beach, was on the phone the whole time, only to go run in the water to get a photo and then run, get back on the phone. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's not vacation. <laughs> and, you know, you really do lose the moment. Like, what, there's all this beauty that surrounds you. There's these moments and these connections that you can have with people and nature and things around you, and then you're on your phone. You know what I mean? Anyway. Um, Interestingly enough, I was talking with my brother and he was like, dude, social media, my brother is barely on social media. Um, and he was like, you know, social media, uh, he was like, it annoys me because he was like, it, it is destroying people and humanity. And I really believe that it is for the people that really abuse it, that are screen addicted. Um, it really is changing the way we communicate with each other. Um, the amount of patience we have each other uh, with each other. Um, and I, 
I want to even say like how kind we are to each other because it's like a lot of people are watching like all this crap on their Facebook, you know, especially Facebook or these articles that make them like, you know, enraged, even though that thing may not even be why real. Are they they to to like, why are they choosing to feed that to their soul? I say that social media, like any other platform, is just a magnifying glass. Mm. It just magnifies yep. what's already there. Yep. And if you have a, doc, a diet of toxicity, yes. then... You yeah. know, you're just gonna. Social media is only gonna man, uh, or, magnify. Or or narcissisticity. No, okay. I mean, I know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're a narcissist, uh, I can't tell you how many people I just get so annoyed when I see people like that always post their booty, they're naked, they're half naked bathroom selfies. I, it's just it's so annoying. <laughs> Shut up. Um, interestingly enough, too, there's uh, so Patrick Shun Xiong, I think I'm saying his name right. He's the billionaire that bought uh, the LA Times. Has says, "quote uh, Social media is the cancer of our time, and social media is a form of metastasis of news. We need to change that." And I believe it. It's sort of like become a cancer for the people that have. Uh, thanks, Kevin, for posting that. Um, you know, it, it allowed people to have like you said this bullhorn or this magnifying glass to be even more yucky or or i think could be on the flip side more awesome it's just how you utilize it yeah right yeah it's just like money it just magnifies who you really are it's a reflection of who you are right and so if you are if you're always posting fight videos or ratchetness and and you just that's all you want to say we all need a little taste of it now and again (laughs) but if that's what you're consumed with or you're trying to seek the attention then that's a whole other that's a whole other issue that doesn't have anything to do with social media social media is just the the tool that's pimping you and how and allowing you to magnify you know ma- magnify that madness but yep. you can use it for you know for good you know it'd be so interesting to see 20 years from now you know even 10 years from now what other new things there are out there you know social media wise and like how we kind of connect with and use technology and i'm trying my best to go back to like the simplicity of it all and i think i'm gonna try i I say i think because i still have issues with this of like not being on my phone before bed more trips to maybe like (laughs) <laughs> looking I know right or looking at you know like look there's all these books behind me in my bookshelf you know like reading more books but maybe like the last 30 minutes 20 30 minutes before I go to sleep you know I, I'm gonna try that but you know it's a whole journey um, anyway our time's up um, it was great to see you and chat with you I haven't chatted with you since you've been back we'll chat more I know, and since you've been back I know, right? And I'll be in Chicago soon because I'm doing another speaking gig there. I don't know where you'll be next week. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can connect there. You got to send me the dates and stuff again. Yeah. I, you know, I, I can. I don't know my life. Any, I'm just like, where am I today? But I uh... <laughs> right, I know. Being in the present moment, that's where we are. Um, right. Anyway, it's good to see your face. You too. Happy Happy uh, Birth Month, and thanks, guys, for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, please share. Send us your uh, thoughts um, about stuff that, you know, questions or stuff that you're thinking about. Maybe we'll do a show around it. Mwah. See you guys later. Mwah. All right. Take care, guys. guys. Bye. 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 Bye.